I'm going Deborah. He's the son of the self-proclaimed most hated woman in America, Madeline Murray O'Hare. I am fighting for my right to have freedom of conscience, to live in the way that I want to live. And at 14, their views took prayer out of public schools. I think I am an atheist, and I wish to be an atheist. Does any of that have a burden for you? Now, 43 years later, William Murray talks about his life without God. My, my home wasn't about atheism. My home was about the absence of God. God just simply wasn't present. He talks about his mother. So what did she teach you about God? She told the world that there was no God, so what did she tell you at home? My mother was just a horribly dysfunctional human being. And he talks about his moment of truth. When a family turns that evil, it, it ends. Coming up now on Deborah. Welcome to the show. We're talking today about moments of truth. Have you ever known something so strongly without a shadow of a doubt, but then came your moment of truth, the real knowing that changed your life forever? For me, moments of truth always come during interviews, and I'm sure I'll have one today, and prayerfully you will too. My guest, he was raised as an atheist. He knew very early on as a boy that there was no God until he had his moment of truth. Here's his powerful story. He was only 14 years old when he was thrust into the political and religious arenas with a lawsuit against the Baltimore Public School District. Okay, let's pray. At issue, prayer in public schools. Bill, why did you leave Woodburn School? Oh, uh, well, you had to say every morning uh, the Lord's Prayer and also the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, which has in it, under God uh, we trust, or uh, something like that. And it was just ridiculous. Because uh, I, am an, I think I am an atheist, and I wish to be an atheist, and I don't feel that it would be appropriate uh, for me to stand up and say the Lord's Prayer or to say uh, this religio-patriotic thing of uh, under God we trust. Were you required to do this at the school? Yes, we were. Every morning, one person would read from the Bible, and you would have to say the Lord's Prayer and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Do you feel that this is a violation of your personal rights? I think it's not only a violation of my personal rights, but it is also a violation of the Constitution of the United States of America. All right. Thank you very much, Bill Murray. You're welcome. But it wasn't Bill Murray who kept the issue in the public eye and before the courts. It was his mother. I am involved uh, in a political religious battle, and religion is politics in the United States. Madeline Murray O'Hare, founder of the American Atheist Organization. Why should I love the Lord? Why should anybody else love the Lord? What has oh, the I Lord ever done for any of us? First, I don't know what he's done for you. I, now, I'm talking, when I like, say us, I mean, to, I'm talking now, I can in tell individually humanity. what he's done for me because he's changed my life. He's given me direction he, in life. He? Why but don't you say she? I'd rather say he because he's the son because, of God. Uh, he's not the daughter of God, see? He's the son of God. See the basis of faith. Are you talking about somebody specific then when you say I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. She called herself the most hated woman in America. Her goal, to remove all vestiges of religion from public life. I am fighting for my right to have freedom of conscience, to live in the way that I want to live, to live in a basic, uh, to live with a philosophy and to live in a way based on that philosophy, the philosophy of atheism, the philosophy of love of fellow man rather than love of God. It all started in 1960 after a failed attempt to defect her and her family to the Soviet Union. They returned to Baltimore and Murray returned to school. As he writes in his book, My Life Without God, Murray remembers walking the halls with his mother that day and hearing prayer and Bible reading coming from the classrooms. Infuriated by what she called an unacceptable promotion of religion, O'Hare began her personal crusade to have prayer in public schools stopped. After three years of legal battles, Murray v. Curlett made it to the Supreme Court, and on June 17th, 1963, in an 8-to-1 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that prayer and Bible reading in public schools were unconstitutional. He's the author of My Life Without God, and he's here to discuss his moment of truth. Help me welcome William Murray. 
Thank you for being here. Thank Great. you for being here. Powerful life story. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Yeah.